Market to Market is everywhere you are. Subscribe to Market to Market on YouTube, find us on the PBS video app to stream on demand, and add our three podcasts on your favorite podcasting app. A good queen, yeah. She's laying good eggs and she is keeping the high population up. USDA values national honey production well over $300 million annually. But in beekeeper brothers Tim and Steve Hyatt's home state of Washington, honeybee pollination directly impacts the $2.5 billion apple industry there, an area which accounts for the lion's share of the fruit's domestic production. What's one link in the chain of providing food? For more than a decade, colony collapse disorder has captured headlines. The syndrome causes adult worker bees to abandon the hive, leaving the queen and her immature brood to fend for themselves. It is a concern. Every year there are stories of beekeepers who lose 50, 70, 80 percent of their hives. Um, and it's hit us in the past. Uh, we're doing our best to prevent that from happening. All they can say for sure is that it's a multifaceted problem. While the brothers say sporadic losses have plagued apiarists for centuries, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency has noted a substantial decline in new CCD cases in recent years. But those closer to the hive parse those reports with an array of more than 60 underlying stressors, like pesticides, disease pathogens, and environmental factors. The varroa mite has been described by many people as probably the number one threat to honeybees. So it has like these um, almost like hook-like mouth seam ripper type appendages. And what they use that to do is to basically rip a hole in the exoskeleton of the honeybee. Dr. Jennifer Hahn is a postdoctoral pathology research associate with Washington State University. She says invasive symbionts, like the varroa mite, attract several other diseases and eventually conquer bees' immune systems, also compromised by exposure to nicotine-based insecticides. Imagine having a parasite living on you that's about the size of a dinner plate, that's feeding on you at all times. Decreased flying time and the inability to pollinate are among the negative results from this relationship. Bees, just like any other animals, can get viruses, and we do not have any good treatments, much like we do not have a good treatment for the common cold. Employing a multi-pronged approach to boost pollinator populations, Dr. Nick Nager is an entomologist specializing in honey bee analysis whose work grew out of a Department of Defense initiative involving fungi. Woo! Harvest time! Mycologist Paul Stamets is a purveyor and promoter of what he calls high-quality gourmet and immune-supportive mushrooms. Post 9-11, the federal government sought extract samples from Stamets' company, Fungi Perfecti, as research into safeguards against a possible chemical weapons attack. USDA, Washington State, and Stamets put their heads together, and a partnership with higher education blossomed. Over 10 years ago, Paul Stamets was growing mushrooms and noticed that honeybees would forage in his mushroom beds. Bees normally live in hollowed out logs where they would encounter fungi on a daily basis. Now they live in these very nice sawn wood hives that have less fungus in them. And so uh, we think that by uh, allowing bees to eat fungal and fungal products again, that this could help restore some of their health. Nager says research shows when bees consume liquids extracted from certain varieties of Stamets mushrooms, it cuts viral levels a thousandfold. Those fungi tend to produce a whole range of antimicrobial compounds. The natural pesticide is good news for Aaron Riggs, who manages a 69-acre apple orchard in the Evergreen State. You couldn't set enough fruit if you didn't have the bees. And the bees are the main source of pollination on, on the fruit. You would get some pollination through other insects or things like that, but you wouldn't get near the crop to make it effective uh, farming, to make it you know, profitable if you didn't have the bees. While the coronavirus pandemic created some hurdles in supply chains and cleaning procedures, the Hyatts say traffic on the roads to market have cleared substantially. Hundreds of their hives crisscross the U.S. on truck beds every year to pollinate tree fruit and nuts before rounding out the summer in honey production. We have to wait for the sun to go down because the bees will be flying all around the orchard. And then when it's dark like this, the bees will all be home. We'll gather them up and take them to a different location. 
With nutritional testing underway, researchers at Washington State University hope to eventually petition the Food and Drug Administration for approval of fungal extracts as a livestock feed additive for bees. The designation could help ease the burden on beekeepers battling colony collapse and its root causes. They're doing a lot of work to try to improve bee health, and we're really appreciative of their efforts. For Market to Market, I'm Josh Bittner.